Beep. Beep, I say. I hope there's nothing fucking up with the beep. Good. All right. This might be a long one. Hello. This is a real life proper feminist. Oh, She's so professional. <laughs> a couple of parameters that make it more likely that I'll take up a video request. The more recent, the better, and the more views, the better. So, so if it's from several years ago and it's still only a couple of hundred views, that that really is punching down. It's going out into a field to punch a, an ant. But if it's a video from last week, and it's 100,000 views, that's like a caribou walking past my house. And I'll be like, hey, caribou. And the caribou will be like, hey, what about that moose that's always passing by? Yes, that's Lacey. I have, I have a rule. A fucking no moose twice rule or whatever. And you're the first caribou I've seen. Nothing personal. <laughs> I just remembered this is a story about me punching a caribou. Don't punch caribou. Caribous. Caribba. Caribella. Caribella. Don't punch mooses. Moose. <laughs> moose, meese. Meeses. Morsh. Just don't punch any of the deer. Deers. <laughs> Fuck you, ungaloids. <laughs> Fuck all of y'all. Whatever y'all are called. <laughs> you fucking non-conformist collectivists. You arbitrary, irregular plurals. <laughs> How dare you be what I say you are. In all seriousness, you know a lot about the subject, more than I do. Okay, so Twist over here is going to explain feminism to Daisy over here. <laughs> it's based. Figure it out. Who am I? Am I Mike? Am I Brian? Or am I Simon Pegg? By the way, thank you for your comments. Message received. Yes, I am aware that I remind you of Simon Pegg. And no, you are not the first to point that out. <laughs> and I I don't know how to say this without sounding like a dick, but yes, also Jack Sparrow. Yeah, it's, yeah if, if you're English and you drink enough, you end up sounding like Keith Richards. This is inevitable. I, I've only just passed uh, 25,000 subscribers, so I thought I'd answer a couple of your more common questions, but I thought I'd weave it into a video rather than just do a separate one. Get me to 100k and maybe I'll do a hangout. <laughs> so... Twist, my dear. <laughs> Tell us what qualifies you as an expert on gender. I talk about it a lot and think about it a lot. Like, I think about it a lot, a lot. And read and watch and ev all of that stuff. I absorb a lot. And in the meantime, I don't even get to call myself an advocate of men's rights unless I'm running an empire of helplines and refuge shelters entirely from my own pocket. Boy, I sure am glad you normal folks don't engage in all that double standard identity politics wank raggery! I used to be very much, if you don't call yourself a feminist, then you're an asshole. Okay. And now I'm kind of a bit more like, call yourself whatever you want to call yourself, but don't be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I call myself whatever I want, you say. Alright. What I'm going to do now is see if I can call myself an anti-feminist and not be in your opinion an asshole and if we can manage that we'll move on to the highest difficulty setting calling myself a men's rights advocate and not being in your opinion an asshole why is that the hardest level you'd think the hardest level on feminism would be anti-feminism but no <laughs> The world doesn't have much of a problem with anti-feminists. They've been around for just as long as feminists. Perhaps stoking the fires the whole time. The media doesn't have much of a problem with anti-feminists or PUAs or MGTOWs. They take every disagreeable thing said or done by all of these groups and blame it all on men's human rights. And its movement. And its advocates. 
But they do not hate men. No, no man hating anywhere. We don't hate men. We just really, really don't like the concept of their rights. And we strongly believe everyone who advocates for said rights should stop forever. And we reserve the right to lie through our teeth about you to millions of people until you stop advocating for the human rights of men. That's all. No hate here. Just, 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 just no human rights for men or we'll bully you to death with lies. Okay? The best way to explain this is to talk about why I, specifically me, use the word feminist. Is it? I suppose that is a better answer than look it up in the dictionary. But my advice would be get an accumulated report from as many people as possible, feminist and otherwise. Consensus is usually a good yardstick. Like, if you're at a restaurant or a bar and you want to know what Coke is, and for the purposes of this scenario, you do not, you, you see the word Coke in a menu, you might instinctively think you're being offered cocaine. And the dictionary will only expand that, de that definition to a formation of fossil fuel. But if you look up from the fucking books and out from your fucking bubble and talk to the other people in the restaurant or bar, you will soon get your consensus. It is a sugary soft drink that tastes like malted battery acid. Which is wonderful with Honeyjack, but whatever. <laughs> uh, Coke with a big C doesn't appear in the dictionary, because the noun is what we call proper. Feminism does appear in the dictionary because it's what we call improper. Ooh, snap, snap, snappy, snappy, snap, snap, snappy, 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 snappy. And even, even Coca-Cola, the biggest, richest company in the fucking world, is not big enough and rich enough to bully the dictionary curators into adding the passage Coke! Noun! The drink that refreshes all things equally. And thank fuck for that! Otherwise Coca-Cola would have free reign to start poisoning people with shoe polish and ketamine. And they could just point to the dictionary and say, no, look! It says Coke refreshes all things equally! Why do you hate equality? Oh, you're dead! I, I, do you see the problem? The world's biggest, richest company could not pull this off, but feminists did. They got their brand name put in the dictionary and defined as its own success. And now they could do whatever they like and call it equality. And no one's successfully called them out on it. No one's gone, hang on, why the fuck is there a commercial for feminism in the middle of the fucking dictionary? Does that sound like something that would happen in a patriarchal society? <laughs> in a patriarchal society, the patriarchal dictionary would be telling us that patriarchy means equality. But we live in a society in which the dictionary tells us feminism means equality. You may do the mathematics as to what that says about this society and its dictionary. But we can say for sure it's not equal. In an equal society, the dictionary would not be telling any of these lies. It would tell us the plain truth that patriarchy is the rule of men and feminism is the rule of women. I'm not saying universities need more patriarchy. I'm saying the other thing. But the way that I think about it is that if you don't call yourself a feminist, then you're not recognizing the systematic historical oppression against women. We wow, Daisy, mate. Daisy, Daisy. My face when? My face when? I know that feel, bro. Fucking hell. I you can call yourself whatever you like, but if you don't call yourself my religion, then you're not recognizing the divine, omnipresent transubstantiation of the dear leader. That's all you did there. You cannot back up what you mean by systematic historical oppression. You just learned those words and now you think they're magic. You need to come in with examples. Actually come in with them, not just start and finish with some fucking jargon. 
But you never come in with examples because you don't have any examples that are not bullshit. I do have examples, by the way. You are now one of them. <laughs> Two of them, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what Daisy's deal is. But yeah, I've got a hundred of you now, at least. Um, <laughs> should I answer another question? For those asking what mic I use, it's a Zoom H4n, so a handy, handy recorder. Basically got a computer inside it. Not a stage microphone. <laughs> There's no cool way of holding it without accidentally turning it off. Not for rock stars, only for kicks. It can run on uh, batteries and record digitally onto itself. And I film with a, with a GoPro. <laughs> So at any time, I could get up and just walk to Leicester Square without stopping the recording. <laughs> That's how mobile I am. And yet, the whole setup remains static on this table in this grotty bedroom the whole time. Ha ha ha! It is funny how I troll you. No? We've come a long way. And yes, men have issues too. Women have issues. Everywhere else in between on the gender spectrum have issues. Usually all these issues are due to the patriarchy, which is this invisible system. <laughs> Do you feel enlightened now, Daisy? <laughs> Are you glad you brought her on? Do you understand now that patriarchy, you see, is this invisible system? <laughs> yeah, yes, everyone has problems, but it's all men's responsibility because of the invisible system. Again, gynocentrism Invisible cannot be satisfactorily demonstrated to exist. Patriarchy, invisible, cannot be satisfactorily demonstrated to exist. Feminism, visible, demonstrably existing, right here in front of you now. Yeah, and as far as I can tell, a feminist is someone who believes in one and only one of these undemonstrable invisible phenomena, namely patriarchy. Not only do you believe in an unfalsifiable spirit, you believe in intervening in the lives and choices of other people on the grounds of the existence of this unfalsifiable spirit. That, my dear, is called theology. You are welcome to it, but it is not welcome in the faculty of science. I hope one day that becomes clear. The reason why I call myself a feminist is because I recognise the fact that Daisy's getting very bored now, Twist. Even though the patriarchy screws men and women over equally, historically and currently so, um... She needs an example of what you're talking about. Women do bear the main brunt of it. So that's why I use it. All you're doing is restating in a thin variety of generalities that women have it bad and it's all men's fault because of invisible magic. And women and men suffer differently. The, the things that um, the patriarchy makes shit for them are very different things. Most of the time, men benefit from the patriarchy. Could you do me a favour and sum up the patriarchy okay. in a sentence? <gasps> well played, Daisy. Very well played indeed, for real, real. I might like you. Yes, Twist, can you please stop completely failing to describe how patriarchy works and actually... Describe how patriarchy works. So the patriarchy is the systematic cultural ideas that we have in society that value masculine tendencies and characteristics over feminine tendencies and characteristics. Yes, that's a very good sentence. For example, I was... <laughs> for example! Well, look who showed up. Nice one, Daisy. Thank you for being about to give us an example. Where were you seven jump cuts ago before we had to undergo that wafting funk of hot air on the right there? It took you this long to realise that she's never going to elaborate what she means because she has no fucking clue what she's saying. They might as well be magic words to her. She's just a pretty face and some fucking jargon. Don't worry, I'd be embarrassed too if I brought her on as an expert on something, on anything other than remembering names for things so go on daisy give us an example of society favoring masculine characteristics for example i was watching a video yesterday on how the majority of hollywood movies have females in a kind of sexy costume mm -hmm. 
would movies have? Actually, you ask it. Would movies have females in a kind of sexy costume in society that value masculine tendencies and characteristics over feminine tendencies and characteristics? Yes, that's a very good sentence. Help! You tried, Daisy. Your example was an example to the contrary of what you were looking for, and you only made it worse, but at least you tried. It's about representation and visibility. The men's issues thing... Might that have anything to do with representation and visibility? I've been thinking about a lot recently. No, you haven't. You've just been calling it patriarchy and blaming everything on the patriarchy. That's not thinking about anything. It's just casting magic fucking words on everything, Hannah. To twist Hannah. Your name's Hannah. You're pissing me off now, Hannah. Because basically, men get screwed over by the patriarchy as well. Called it. Called you calling it that. You're a mentalist, Hannah. It's, uh, when I acknowledge that women have problems, I do not blame all of those problems on a phantasm like gynocentrism or even on a concrete dinosaur like feminism. There is no one thing on which you can blame all of your problems or all of anyone's problems and yet that is precisely what you're doing that is your philosophy women have problems because patriarchy prefers men and men also have problems but it's also because patriarchy prefers men so the solution for equilibrium in both cases is for everyone to prefer women at all times at all costs is it not funny how that works Did you notice? Take what I said just now and replace the word patriarchy with the word God. Women have problems because God prefers men and men also have problems but it's also because God prefers men. This is not new at all. It's what they've been saying for thousands of years. All they did was change one word. And they didn't even change it by much. Men get screwed over by the patriarchy as well because of the expectations um, of masculinity. It's, it's almost as though someone gave them the impression that they are to blame for all their problems and for everyone's problems. And what that means. The main thing that um, a lot of people bring up is the fact that the biggest killer of young men is suicide and actually men have really high rates of mental health problems. Yes, it's almost as though someone gave them the impression that society is rigged for their benefit. And if you believe that society is rigged for your benefit and yet you still fail over and over again, it rather, I, it, it stings. In a place that makes you want to end your life. Your solution to all of these suicidal men is smash the patriarchy. Your solution is to re-rig the system so it doesn't benefit men. <laughs> Even if they're going, I'm suicidal because I can't see my kids. Your response is, okay, better rig the system so you can't see your kids. Oh, you killed yourself. Who are you there for? And I... You thought the uh, sound straight up evil, but I don't think you're evil. I think you're just very stupid and you don't care, which isn't the same as evil. I don't quite know what evil is, but I, I don't think it's that. You're just stupid and you don't care. Shit happens. Because um, it's not seen as, like, manly or strong to talk about your feelings. <laughs> yeah. And it's not seen as morally defensible to talk about your human rights. It's not seen as broadcastable or even uncensorable to talk about your human rights or your feelings about not having them. If I said, I'd like to have a child whom I'm allowed to raise, or I'd like to have sex without automatic financial responsibility for a child, the feminists will cut my mic before I can get through my sentence, they'll have me escorted out of the building, and they'll claim I harassed them with hate speech. And then they will claim that men's only problem is they're not allowed to talk about their problems. And that feminists are helping. That feminists are the only people helping and that no one else is allowed to help. 
Because feminists have totally got this! Because they they're psychotic. They don't know what compassion is. They don't know how empathy works. They had to unlearn it so they could learn how to own people using nothing more than basic tribal word trickery. It's not new, it's not liberal, and it sure as fuck is not progressive. And feminists care about that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, it does. That's like women, part men. of... Yeah. Exactly. Oh, well, aren't you nice? I, if, you know, nice guys, yeah? If so-called nice guys were really nice guys, they wouldn't need to declare themselves nice guys like that, would they? They'd just be nice. In the meantime, you feel a perfectly justified need to declare that feminists are nice and feminists care about everyone without ever actually demonstrating that you care. That is a gross and opaque double standard, one of many in a lattice of double standards that you hold to instead of a conscience. That's part of what we do. Like, if you break down the patriarchy and you break down gender roles... What are you left with? Or what, what's not been broken down after you've broken all that down? Might it be feminism and nothing else? Yeah, and that's your idea of breaking down gender roles. Prevent any trace of any system that might benefit men, i.e. patriarchy, and what's left over must be equality. Because that's the only kind of inequality. There's no such thing as a system that benefits women. <laughs> I mean, this gynocentrism of yours doesn't satisfactorily exist. Fem feminism doesn't count. Feminism has no power, except in, in the learning institutions and the media. I, I, I. And anyway, feminism doesn't just benefit women. Feminism is about equality because it prevents systems from benefiting men. We certainly don't need a counter motion to prevent systems from benefiting women. There are no systems that benefit women. Feminism doesn't count. Feminism is about equality. Round and round we go. That's what it's like in a feminist's head. It's horrible. It's like a pendulum on the end of a hundred other pendula. It's loads more grouped together in like end dimensional tentacles on a jellyfish of Standardized chaos. <laughs> oh God, it's yeah. I I do this because it's like taking a drug. It makes you think so stupidly that it resets your brain. Everyone benefits. Exactly. That was very good. Yeah. You're so I'm good trying. I'm so glad you're <laughs> they're here. all they're still gonna come for us. Yes, I it I I came for you. Hello. I, it's, it's it's just. It's, you're talking like a politician and a really slimy one at that. You're not explaining anything. You're just stringing buzzwords together as you think of them with no contextual elaboration. I expect this from politicians whose job it is to lie. I don't expect it from regular people sat on a sofa trying to talk like normal people. This is freaky. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm happy that you're happy. I uh, gen yeah, Genuinely. See, folks, they, you know, they, they, don't, they don't appear to mind. They be telling me I harass women online. Do they look harassed to you? Do they look like they feel harassed? Do I? Okay, break time. Uh, I'll take a few more questions from the comments section, shall I? The more common ones. Is that real alcohol? Yes, all of it. Even the absinthe, even the Baileys, I do not lie to you, why would I? Why don't you have more subscribers? Um, because I'm not more good. That seems to be the logical answer there. I don't know why you keep asking me. Uh, tidy your room. You cannot see my floor, you mental case. All you can see is the bed and some shelves. Shelves are supposed to have things on them. I did not spend seven years in the ministry of putting things on top of other things to abandon that discipline, like yesterday's putting things in holes which are the same shape as the things. All right, back to the sitcom. We're going to mess up because we have privilege. 
Me too. Pretty simple answer, right? Pretty balanced answer. And we were okay with the balance of that simple answer. Until about a hundred years ago, when some women changed their minds and decided they can't mess up because they're not privileged. And now most women believe it. All it took was a century. There are some things that we just like, don't notice. Mm -hmm. There's quite a lot of things you haven't noticed. Have you noticed? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do. But our job is to like sit and listen. No. To people with less privilege than us. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. I know, like, I know when you when you talk to men about your problems, we we tend to react as though you want us to fix them. And, and we get it now. You don't want us to fix them. You just want us to sit and listen, and nod our fucking heads. And say, uh huh, yeah, oh, that's crazy. Oh, oh, totally. She's completely in the wrong. Uh huh. <laughs> we get it. That's what you want. That's what cures your problems. Because your problems are back tier first world problems that have no cure other than a loosening of your own neurosis. We understand that now. We learned it from the sitcoms. They were much more honest than you. But listen to me, ladies. You know how men instinctively want to fix problems instead of just listen? Well, that's what they want from you when they tell you about their problems. On the rare occasion that a man might come to you with a problem, he is not just looking for someone to listen and nod their fucking head. They need help with something. They are actually trying to fix something and they need your help. And this means, among other things, that when a man advocates for his human rights, that doesn't mean he is whining about a girl who doesn't like him. It is far more likely that he is whining about children who never get to see him. He needs your help. Maybe you can use that sly superficial political ease of yours to have a talk with a government representative about why this infringement of human rights must continue. No, uh, your skills would be better put to use, blaming everything on an invisible spirit. That's all men's responsibility. Okie dokie. And then basically like support them. Yes, support them, support men, please. And perhaps their rights. Can you call yourself a men's rights supporter? Or is there something about labels that just doesn't suit positivity towards men? Labels and positivity towards men are two phenomena that, are, that appear to be magnetically repellent in this ra reality of ours. It is most queer. Before you have a go at me for using that word, please consider what I just said. Um, I like to use the analogy of feminist goggles. You see, Sargon didn't make that up. They did. <laughs> they just have no fucking self-awareness. So like once you see the patriarchy, you have these goggles on and like you can't unsee it. Uh -huh. Like it's everywhere. Like it, it literally is everywhere. Like you can see it. <laughs> I thought you said it was invisible. How does it become visible? I mean, what are the goggles in this symbolism? What in reality do the goggles represent? It's, it's the indoctrination, isn't it, Hannah? When you've read enough books, and ingested enough propaganda to the point where it has pushed all the reasoning facilities out of your brain, then you suddenly see something that is mysteriously invisible to all the normies. <laughs> and people have the nerve to accuse us of being conspiracy theorists. I am not telling you about shit that doesn't exist. Feminists exist. Millions of them. There's two in front of you right now. There they are both searching for answers in the side of their neck, like people always do when they're totally not spinning a load of bullshit. They are real, and this is what they believe. They believe in an omnipresent, unfalsifiable, super fucking natural conspiracy against women. They feel no burden to explain how the fuck it works, but they demand everyone change their lives because of it. 
These people exist. They have been running our fucking universities for generations now, and that is why there are currently millions of them sat on sofas in reasonably expensive pastel-coloured apartments all over the world, bumbling their way through the kind of postmodern nonsense that would make a Scientologist's eyes glaze over. And in the face of all this, I'm telling you, misandry is a thing. That makes me a nut job tinfoil hat widow. Please, get a fucking grip, people. Um, and it's exhausting, it's tiring, it's scary. But that doesn't mean we can't take them off. I thought you said you can't unsee it. <laughs> it's, it's invisible, but you can see it. And then you can't unsee it, but you can. <laughs> I take it back. You make politicians sound articulate and helpful. <laughs> a couple of things I've learned. Lawyers may be bad, but they're not as bad as the press. And politicians may be bad, but they're not as bad as identity politicians. Because in both of these cases, the former is at least sometimes competent. <laughs> you know, it's lawful evil as opposed to chaotic evil. Once you've stared into the eyes of chaotic evil, anything's better. Yeah, I, 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 I don't mean evil. I still don't mean evil evil. It's a fucking D&D &D reference, shut up. Casual sexism. Bit of classic casual sexism rape joke here and there. Mm, exactly. What is sexist about a rape joke? Please? Oh, that's right. We decided it's not rape when women do it. Because this is a sexism-free zone. Just accept what they say and believe them, like really believe them and support them in whatever way they need. I'm being discriminated against. I need you to dismantle feminism. No? I, do you not believe me or were you not listening? I don't know. You're just so much better at putting your thoughts into words. <laughs> I don't think she is. Daisy, she finds it easy to speak, but that's just because she's convinced she's intelligent. That's in no way indicative that there's any thought behind what she's saying. I think the people who put the most thought into their words are the people who struggle to speak. An artist is someone who finds art difficult. A, a, a politician is someone who finds politics difficult. And so on. What do feminists find difficult? I think you know the answer! Uh, and like a big phrase that was going on at Women of the World Festival is if you can't see it, you can't be it. Mm. Then how the fuck did men figure it out? And so like, we need to be able to see women doing all these things. Because women cannot see men as role models. Correction. Feminists cannot see men as role models. Women are fucking normal. Well, this has been well serious. I'm not pooping you. Not at all. Can I say one more thing? Yeah. We're all problematic. And that's one way to go. I quite like the good old fashioned phrase, nobody's perfect. I think I'll stick with it. I think they're basically the same sentiment. I just I think nobody's perfect is perhaps a, a nicer phrasing than we're all problematic. <laughs> That's all I got for that one. Yeah. Like, the yeah. main thing is how people deal with the criticism. How are you holding up, ladies? It's watching with Adam. Uh, yep. Good. <laughs> Bye. You're just so good at putting your thoughts into words. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the end. Sorry that this had no structure. It's like painting a portrait without shaping it, You're starting in one corner. It's just this hideous, perspectiveless Cronenberg monster. And the ending is just as graceless. You what? You want to know about my gear? Yeah, I'll only show you my gear. You mean my instruments, don't you? Not my drugs, naughty people. I clearly don't do any of that stuff. Uh, yeah, if you want to see my. Uh, if you want to see my gear, um, probably have to go widescreen. Uh, medium screen. Widescreen's a bit weird. There we go. Oh, fuck, you want some guitars, won't you? Uh, the, the acoustics you'll already know about. 
straightforward Tanglewood effort. You don't want me to see me play. So, yeah, I asked the guy in the shop for a fairly cheap acoustic that's good for tapping. And I think he just gave me a random guitar. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they're doing, which is fair enough, because neither do I. This My other acoustic is also a Tanglewood. It's electroacoustic. I did most of my learning on this, as you can probably tell from the state of the fretboard there. It's horribly out of tune, and it's always been horribly tinny. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, this thing's been with me to Australia and back, so we're quite close. Oh, shit! <laughs> I forgot I had this! Oh, shit! <sighs> what does that say? Can you read that from there? Say my name, Mingach. Say my name. Yeah, David. David Mitchell gave me that. But that's a story for another time. First guitar I ever owned. Rather frosty-looking Charvette. Don't get excited. It's it's one of those cheap Japanese knockoffs. I don't play it anymore because it's fucked. Uh, box standard strap. Gotta have a box standard strap kicking around somewhere. I don't play this anymore either, though, because I have a Telecaster now. One of countless Telecasters, no doubt, named Graham. After Graham Coxon. Coxon's my boy. Look him up. This is the guitar you've been hearing on all those songs ever since uh, Dark Cheese TV. They gave me 10 grand to make that. First thing I did was buy a Telecaster. And an effects unit, yeah. RP500, Digitech. Uh, there's countless effects on this thing and I only use two patches. <laughs> one, with a, one with a sort of crunchy so overdrive and one with a full on metal distortion. The sound I want is somewhere in between the two and I can't conjure it so I just use both. That's why it all sounds rather muddy in places. I like it that way. You can't hear any of the specific mistakes. But yeah, I don't really go in for effects. I'm all about the notes and playing them. <laughs> I think it's called technique or something. It's funny that machinery is called technical and the human element is called technique. What a difference a language makes. Yeah, here's the... Okay, now, okay, I might as well show you that. Yeah, it's the keyboard that's, that's been on my immediate left this whole time. But it's a Yamaha DJX. It, I've had it for 18 years because it has not stopped working for 18 years. I mainly use it for drums now. I've been playing the fucking piano since I was eight years old and I'm still rubbish. Yeah. Oh, but the bass! Shit, I forgot the bass! I like the bass. The buttery biscuit bass. Only bass I've ever had. It's a Fender Precision, but nobody knows what kind of Fender Precision, apart from Dusty. <laughs> I've taken this to many gigs, and every time it's... I've never seen a Precision like that before. Yeah, apparently nobody has. It's either a hack job, or it's worth a million dollars. It's kind of fucking clunky, and really fucking heavy, but yeah, it's good enough for punk. <laughs> I'm not plugging anything in the amps all the way over there, and I'm... I've already done enough dancing tech monkey business for you people. <coughs> I hope that satisfies your curiosity. Please do not tell me how I can improve my sound. I do not use the same software as you. Thank you for the offer, but I've worked with other engineers in the past. Most of the time they just want other people's shit to sound like their shit. They're like interior decorators. All they really do is insist that their subjective opinion is the objective truth. You're not a fucking architect. Get over yourself. All right, I'll, I'll play you out the remix I made without the aid of any of these instruments. If you have any complaints about it, feel free to contact the original composer. Probably won't take you long to see what I've done here. Goodbye, and forever fuck the wrong rights and write the wrong fucks. Right?
feminism. Women who claim to be so-called women's rights activists are creeps, confused about why men don't throw themselves on their cons- Nobody likes being rejected by someone they're interested in, but coming up with conspiracy theories about males who seeking to destroy all women or whining about how unfair it is that a man didn't respond to your religious advances the way you wanted them to is really just a sick reaction and symptomatic of the bigger problem that you, as a fuck girl blind to your own privilege, are so used to getting what you want and so unused to expressing your emotions in constructive ways that you feel compelled to turn your negative feelings back onto the man you were trying to get to fuck. And then you go off and watch weak, simple-minded, and frankly counterproductive dicks. Feminism, training tutorials, fuck boys. Feminism, training tutorials, no, men's rights. Feminism, training tutorials, there's no such thing as romantic feminism. Training tutorials, whining, 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 construct creeps, fucking creeps, fucking creeps, fucking creeps, fucking, and listen to fucking ideology, teach you how to try and manipulate other people's feelings so you might have a chance at sleeping. Feminism, training tutorials, fuck boys. Feminism, training tutorials, no, men's rights. Feminism, training tutorials, there's no such thing as romantic feminism. Training tutorials, whining, 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 constr- If you think meninism is our actual ideology, your priorities are fucked up and you're a fucking loser. 